from the last video, I mentioned how I don't show many of the mistakes I, I make. Uh, yesterday, I made a pretty bad one. I tried to put up this big, heavy piece of drywall um, up against the underside of this ceiling, and it just was way too heavy, and it ended up falling right on my head, and it kind of hurt and kind of just took the wind out of me. I basically didn't get a whole lot done from that point forward, but I did get some uh, whiteboard um, planks that I think will be way more manageable. And I'm just, my plan is to just run them laterally across the whole length. Um, I think I need like 20 of them. Um, they're six inches wide. So I think that'll be a lot better solution. I'll be able to hold those up. I mean, they're, they're not at holding anything up above your head is kind of a challenge, but I think it'll be way easier than trying to hold this entire thing up and screw it in. I'll just hold each one individually and hammer them in. One of the unforeseen challenges of this project, um, of the garden shed cabin conversion project, is sleeping uh, sleeping in my van. Um, I was sleeping in a tent for a couple nights, and then I, I moved into my van trying to get a little bit warmer. This is going to be my fourth night out here tonight. Uh, and... Although it didn't seem to me at first like it would be a big deal, uh, and it's actually not like freezing cold at night or anything. It's probably in the lower 40s. I think tonight's supposed to be 40 on the dot um, as the low. Uh, it's just that continual cold throughout the night. Um, when you wake up in the morning, when I wake up in the morning, it's my body feels pretty sore almost, and I'm kind of creaky, and it takes me a, a good 30 minutes to really wake up. Um, and the actual work on the garden shed is challenging in and of itself because it's, it's kind of new for me and it's a lot of moving, a lot of physical kind of activity. Um, but the 
nights are challenging too. And that kind of made me think of two things. Um, mountain climbing and homelessness. I know they don't seem analogous, but I, in a way they are. Um, so mountain climbing, I watch some mountain climbing um, documentaries on Netflix and stuff. And they're really neat. And those guys are super hardcore. But one of the things that, I mean, climbing the mountain is certainly portrayed as very difficult. It's a huge challenge, amazing challenge, incredible. But one of the things that I now see that's part of the challenge, it's also a, a primary challenge, is sleeping in poor conditions. So sleeping when it's not level, or sleeping when you don't have a pillow, or sleeping when it's cold all through the night. Um, or just kind of eating the same stuff, not having a very diverse diet, not having a super healthy diet. Those are major challenges. Um, and on the fifth and sixth and 10th day, I'm sure those really start to take their toll. Um, in addition to whatever the actual goal is or whatever the actual like ostensible challenges like climbing the mountain. And another, uh, aspect of that is homelessness. So, um, in the previous video, uh, Garden Shed Cabin Part 2, I talk about, I mentioned how there's some extra truth to be found out here. Um, I think, I think one of those is how difficult it is to forego a regular sleeping situation that's comfortable and that you can rely on every single night. Um, Back in Chapel Hill, I have a great sleeping situation and it makes me so much more productive. It's amazing uh, to know that I can rely on that comfy, safe bed every single night to wake up and, and meet the next day. Um, if you're homeless, you don't have that. It's kind of con continually in flux. It's not super comfortable. Maybe your diet isn't great. So there is some similarity to um, sleeping outside or uh, uh, mountain climbing or just sleeping in, in poor conditions and being homeless. It's a continual grind that really wears on you. And I'm sure that it inhibits one's ability to think really clearly, really insightfully, um, go look for a job, be your best self. All of that stuff is really inhibited by a uh, lack of uh, adequate sleeping conditions.
that turned out to be a lot more work than I thought it was going to be. And I'm not super pleased with the outcome. I, I don't think I really know how to use that stuff. I thought, I thought I knew how to install that underlayment. It's just like tar paper. It's weird. It's, it's, I mean, and plus I wasn't using staples. I was using nails and I didn't really have a good way to keep the sides down. And I tried to layer it up, but it seemed super thin. It almost seemed old. It was tearing and stuff. It was kind of just a little bit of a disaster, but I, I managed to get it a little bit tidier with some uh, uh, masking tape that I found just luckily. So at least it's like on there in a, in a somewhat secure fashion. Anyway, uh, glad to have that part behind me. Um, so the next part will be finally, we get to install the cedar shingles. I'm gonna be putting those up uh, in the next video. Everything's prepared. Um, all the dirty work is done. So we get the glory of actually putting on the cedar shingles. That'll be fun. Um, so tonight my uh, neighbor has actually invited me over for dinner and he said I could take a shower there too, which would be really, really special. I'm gonna do that. Um, tonight will be my last night before I go back to Chapel Hill. Um, I'm looking forward to it and uh, I think that's all for this time. I'll see you next time when we install that cedar shake roof.